Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Fear of Frontier. I'm your host, Blind Apple, and it is my privilege this week to discuss our wallets and Lelantis. I know what you're thinking, though. Didn't he already talk a lot about those things already? And yes, I have, but I haven't shown it to you. That's right. Today, we're actually going to showcase our technology in action, and I hope you're ready. Before we jump into the bulk of this demo, I first want to highlight our ongoing contest. To celebrate Lelantis being reactivated, we are holding a community event throughout the month. We want to encourage you all to anonymize as much of your funds as possible. And to do that, we will be crediting prizes directly to random addresses that do so. The exact specifics are on our website, as usual, but just know that the larger the amount that is anonymized, the higher the chance you have to win. Also, only Lelantis Mints above one Fero qualify, and Lelantis J Mints are not counted. There's a host of prizes to win from, so get anonymizing. And with that, let's jump on into the demos. The first thing I want to point out is that there are currently three wallets available for download on the website. In this video, we will be focusing on the QT wallet and the Electron wallet. Since Electrum is a light wallet, it doesn't have all the capabilities that we want to showcase. That doesn't mean that it isn't useful in its own way though. But alright, enough chit chat, let's look at the wallets. So here we have the QT wallet, which is the high security option we have to offer. If you look at the top of the window, you'll see that we have several tabs. The Overview tab, the Send tab, the Receive tab, the Transaction tab, and the Masternode tab. They're pretty self-explanatory. Let's look at receiving real quick. I'm going to request a payment and a new window will pop up. We now have a few ways to request that payment. The QR code, the URI, or just the address. I am sending money to myself for this video, so I will just be using the address. So I sent myself some Firo, and I'll go to the Overview tab. Notice that I'm being sent about 10.5 transparent Firo. I know that this transaction is still being mine because it is in the pending section. It'll take a bit of time, so I'll skip ahead a few minutes. Once the transaction goes through, you'll notice that the 10.5 Firo I sent is now in the available balance for me to spend. However, I don't want to spend transparent Firo, so I'll just hit the anonymize all button, which is just begging to be pressed. Upon clicking the button, I am prompted for my passphrase. Make extra sure that you have this stored securely somewhere. I made this dummy wallet just for the Firo Frontier, so I'm able to get away with having it on a text document to the side. Regardless, once I put in the passphrase, I can anonymize my funds. I can lock the wallet after this if I choose, but I'll skip that this time around. Now, you can clearly see that my private balance increased. It's still pending because the anonymization takes a minute, but it will move to the available private balance very soon. A quick tip, it's wise to anonymize your funds whenever you can. If you only anonymize your funds just before you want to make a transaction, that increases the risk of some adversary finding a time correlation in the blockchain. So keep as much of your balance anonymized as possible and do it often. Speaking of the blockchain, let's see what my transaction actually looks like on a blockchain explorer. Let's go to the transaction tab and double click on the transaction in question. This will pull up various details, including the transaction ID, which I'll just copy. Now. I'm going to pull up an internet browser, go to this website, and paste the transaction ID in the search bar. And voila! We have the ID, the size, the fee, and other information about this transaction. We can also scroll down to see a little more info if we want. Now, let's see what it looks like to send some Bureau through the QT wallet by hopping on over to the Send tab. I actually have the address I'm sending to since I'm just sending it to myself, so I'll paste that in. Notice the three buttons on the side of the address bar. These are just here to help if you want it. For your bookkeeping needs, you can add a label to the transaction, like bill, gift, what have you. I'm just going to put in Fiero Frontier. Also, if you look at the bottom right of the screen, you can see the option to use some of your transparent balance. 
I won't do that right now, but I just wanted to point it out. Put the amount you want to send. I'm just going to subtract the fee from the amount. And there we go. As always, your passphrase is required. And once you put that in, you just need one more confirmation and you're good to go. Let's hop on over to the overview tab again and see what updated. If we pretend I didn't just send to myself, we can now see that I have about 10 transparent Firo, and it's as simple as that. Before we move on to the Electron Wallet, I just want to mention that you shouldn't spend the exact same amount that you anonymize. It's much wiser to spend less than that. This is because if you anonymize 10 Firo and then spend that 10 private Firo immediately after, it looks a little suspicious. Again, we just want to avoid any time correlations, and we want to keep your information private. Let's open up the Electron Wallet. It'll take a couple seconds to initialize, but good things come to those who wait. The first thing to notice is the red statement at the top. Until this goes away, I won't be able to interact with the blockchain. Fortunately, it doesn't take very long at all, and it'll just quietly disappear. In our case, however, we just received some Firo, so we get this clear banner prompting me to anonymize it. Of course, I'll happily oblige because one, I want to keep my financial history private, and two, I want to be entered into the contest. As usual, once I press it, I am prompted to enter my passphrase. You'll notice that the amount I anonymize is once again pending. I just need to wait a minute before the bureau is hidden. While we wait, let's just take a quick look at the tabs of the wallet. We have send, receive, transactions, and more. Personally, this wallet looks nicer to me than the other one. A big difference between the wallets is the coin swap tab, where compliments of switch chain you can swap from and to Firo in a convenient way. I will be sending money to myself again, so let's go to the Receive tab. I can send my QR code or send the address. It's really straightforward to give somebody the ability to pay you. Also, for bookkeeping, I can change the name of this transaction. Click the address to copy it into your clipboard. Since I'm sending money to myself, I go to the Send tab. Notice at the bottom right, I can toggle whether I'm sending private or public Firo. Right now, I don't have any public Firo to send, but I just wanted to point this out because this is how Lelantis works in this wallet. We paste the address. You can actually add that address to a contact list for future use if you want. I'll add the label and send 6.5 Firo, less than I anonymized, and subtract the fee from the total. You can customize your fee and your inputs if you want as well. I'll send it and use my passphrase one last time. And there we go. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that little demo. The Firo team has received quite a lot of requests on how to use Lelantis, so we really wanted to take the opportunity this week to showcase the technology we're so proud of. Don't forget to participate in the anonymization contest for the chance to win big. And with that, my time for this week is up. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and press the bell notification. This is Spline Apple, signing off.